What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. My name is Pain in the Axe and today I'm going to be bringing you my very first Arcanist PvP build. Arcanist is a brand new class that's coming to the Elder Scrolls Online on June 5th of 2023. I gotta say, the class is a lot of fun. It's quite a banger of a class. The class contains a lot of great things in its kit such as damage shields, armor buffs and debuffs, a unique debuff you can put on your targets, and even a passive that increases the amount of damage you do from status effects such as burning, chilled, concussed, you name it. Plus, I gotta say, the class just looks visually fantastic. I love running around in my PvP environments, just laser beaming people from 100 HP to 0 HP. In fact, ladies and gentlemen, the title of today's build is going to be Laser Beam. Let's get right into it. All right, guys, so the first thing we're going to be going over for the build is what gear sets we're using. And we're going to start with the bread and butter of this build, which is going to be Deadly Strikes gear set. What is Deadly Strikes? Well, Deadly Strikes is a gear set that buffs your do over time damage and your channeled ability damage by 15%. It's also a medium armor set, so it directly benefits from a lot of the damage passives that come from medium armor, such as agility. Now, because we are running a beam build, this set directly buffs the power of our Pragmatic Fate Carver skill, which I'm going to explain later in the build section when we're talking about skills. So it buffs that primary skill we'll be using, as well as having the added benefit of buffing all the damage over time effects that this build will have. You're going to slot this set on your gloves, your belt, and your boots, all with an impenetrable trait and a max mag enchant, as well as your necklace and your ring with a weapon damage enchant with the bloodthirsty trait. Now, there's a few reasons why I like to run it this way. The first reason is, is that it's active on your character, no matter what bar you're on, whether it be your back bar or your front bar, you're still going to be benefiting from everything Deadly Strikes has to offer. Another reason is, is that you're maximizing how many medium armor pieces you're running on your build, which directly buff your damage through all the medium armor passives. And lastly, it opens you up to some more choices for mythic items. I'm going to go over the mythic we're using next, but if you wanted to use like various ring mythics or like a necklace mythic, such as Sea Serpent's coil uh, you could do so as by interchanging some of your jewelry pieces out to accommodate that all right as promised the next item we're going to be running on this build is going to be a mythic item that i actually haven't ran on any build in a quite a long time it's going to be the malakas band brutality now why are we running malakas well malakas offers 16 percent damage to all kinds of damage you do dots direct aoe doesn't matter it's a flat 16 percent extra damage you do while sacrificing 50 percent of your critical damage now i see that this is worth it for this build because naturally this build has a very low crit rating of roughly about 16 to 17 percent so chances are you're not going to be doing very many crits on this build you can buff your critical rating with uh, one of the morphs of rune blades but you do have to have three crux on you at all times to keep that buff and chances are of this build you're going to be spending your crux quite often on either your beam or another one of your damage shield skills that i'm going to get into later in the video but that is why i'm justifying running malakath on this build it just really increases the damage of your beam and your dots and just everything you do it makes the build just that much more powerful so with all that being said you're going to want to run bloodthirsty as your trait for this ring as well as a weapon damage increase glyph on this ring as well all right guys up next we're going to be talking about what weapons we're running and the first front bar set we're going to be talking about is our master's dual wield maces now master's dual wield is a gear set that buffs the damage of a skill that we're going to be used called blood craze it's a morph of twin slashes by 1635 on the initial hit the perfected variant it also is going to add a little bit of crit chance which is kind of negligible since we're running malakath anyway now we're going to be slotting this on our front bar for our main hand, we're going to have it with a poison enchant as Nernhone for the trait, increase its weapon damage by 15%. And on our offhand, we're going to have a disease glyph and the sharpened trait. So the reason why we're running maces as opposed to any other weapon type is because maces offer armor penetration per mace you have in your hand by 1650, making a grand total of 3,300 armor penetration. And why that is important because people in PvP generally like to run more on the tankier side. So this will help you burn through some of that resistance they have. All right, since we're talking about penetration and we happen to be playing a class that uses tentacles to put out damage, oddly enough, let's talk about our monster set, which is actually gonna add even more penetration and damage. And that set is called Bowergs. Now, Bowergs is a monster set that's gonna give us more weapon and spell damage, depending on how much ultimate we consume, as well as multiplying that ultimate by 23 to give us more spell and physical penetration. Now, what does that mean? Okay, so if you use 200 ultimate, you're gonna gain 200 weapon and spell damage, or if you use 200 ultimate, you're also gonna gain 4,600 
spell and physical penetration yeah, a little bit of math goes into this one fortunately the game does it for you just know the more ultimate you hold on to the more damage you're going to do. So if you hit someone with a 500 ult cost of whatever ultimate you use, just know your damage is going to go way up and your penetration is also going to go way through the roof. It makes this set really good. All right, so since this is a monster set, we have to slot this on our head and shoulders. So for our shoulders, we're going to run it as a medium armor, a max mag enchant with impenetrable being the trait. And for the helmets, we're running it heavy with a prismatic enchant with max health, max stam, max magicka, with the reinforced armor trait to further amplify its resistance value. Going back to our weapons, we're gonna talk about our back bar weapon item set, which is going to be the Vatatran Perfected Ice Staff. Now, what does the Vatatran Ice Staff do? Well, I'm glad you asked. What happens is that when you use a skill called Elemental Susceptibility, which again, we're gonna talk about later. Don't worry, we'll get, we'll get there, guys. Don't worry, we'll get there. What happens is when you use that, it's gonna create a beam that goes from you to your target that does do over time damage with flame, shock and ice damage which also has the possibility to proc other status effects which are going to be increased with one of your passives in your class kit now the reason why we're running an ice staff is because destruction staff has a passive called ancient knowledge and ancient knowledge is when you're holding an ice staff your block will cost 36 percent less and you'll also gain 20 percent block mitigation one other thing to keep in mind is that if you have trifocus on whenever you block it's going to take your magicka as your primary blocking stat as opposed to your stamina so if you don't mind that you can keep it, but me personally, I don't like that. So I just take the try focus passive out completely. But again, if you don't mind having it, it, it's okay. Like you can just manage your magicka that way. One benefit for keeping it is that whenever you heavy attack with the ice staff, you'll gain a damage shield. So that's one positive we have for keeping it. Just personally, I'm not a big fan of it. So it's up to you to decide whether if you want that or not. Either way, it's okay. Now for in terms of trait and glyph, we're going to run this with the defending trait on the back bar to further enhance our resistance value when we're in a defensive state. And we're also going to have a weapon and spell damage glyph to further boost our damage with fly attacks on our back bar. All right, our last two armor pieces are going to be Curious of the Trainee on the chest plate and Druid's Braid Greaves on the legs. Both of them are going to be heavy armor with a prismatic enchant with reinforced as the armor trait to further boost the resistance value of both pieces. The reason for this is to boost our max health to our higher value, as well as add a higher tooltip to some of our shielded abilities. All right, guys, with the gear sets out of the way, it's time to talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is going to be the like button and the subscribe button. Ladies and gentlemen, by pressing those two buttons, you can push this video out to more potential laser beam enthusiasts such as yourself. Really helps the channel grow. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you. If you made it this far, thank you. Anyways, um, we're gonna now talk about some of the skills we'll be running next on this build. Let's get right into that. So something we're gonna need to talk about before we get into the abilities is the crux system that the Arcanist is bringing to the Elder Scrolls Online. What is crux? I'm glad you asked. Crux are gonna be these little triangles that come around your character whenever you cast certain Arcanist abilities. Now, you can generate crux by casting those abilities, and you can also spend your crux on using other types of abilities. Generally, when you spend crux, you're going to be buffing that ability's power, it may add a healing effect, or it will reduce cost of certain abilities. This is important because when I start talking about some of the Arcanist abilities, you're going to be hearing me talk about that word crux a lot when we're going through it. So it's very important you guys understand what crux means because it's just going to be really a main staple of the build we're going to be using our crux to really buff things like our beam and our shield primarily but we're going to talk about which skills exactly build that crux for you and which ones spend it all right so the first skill we have in our back bar is a skill called resolving vigor this is a staple of pvp you see a lot of end game pvpers running around with it pretty much a do over time heal lasts about five seconds and also grants you minor resolve which boosts your resistance by roughly about three thousand all right, the next skill we have in our back bar is a skill called Elemental Susceptibility. It's a skill found in the Destruction skill tree. Uh, it's gonna be our source of major breach, which is gonna reduce our target's armor by about 6,000. It also is gonna benefit by proccing our Vatishran Ice Staff, which is gonna put this tether on the target and start doing damage to it over time for 10 seconds. Um, Elemental Susceptibility also will proc a new status effect every seven and a half seconds, which is great because this class has a passive called Psychic Lesion, or Lesion. I can't really pronounce it. I'll put it on the screen for you guys to read. My words are terrible. And it increases the amount of damage you do with status effects by 15%. So this pairs super well with the Arcanist as a whole, the Vatishran. You should expect to see a lot of people running Vatishran staffs on the Arcanist because it just absolutely melts things just by itself. Our next skill is going to be our first Arcanist skill on this build. It's going to be called Inspired Scholarship. So what this skill does, it gives us a source of major brutality and sorcery. And what's really unique about this ability is that it can be on your back bar and the major brutality 
in sorcery will still be applied to your front bar all it has to do is be slotted you don't have to activate it to get the buff but if you do activate it it's going to increase the damage of your arcanist abilities by about 3000 ish depending on your tool tips what also it does is it generates a crux whenever it does damage so this could happen once every three seconds so it's a nice way to gain some crux while you're fighting and just doing some extra damage to your opponents all right our next back bar skill is this insanely cracked shield called impervious ward this ability does quite a lot and it's really great so the first thing it really does is it provides a really massive damage shield for one second it's great for mitigating burst you can just hit it over and over again when you know like something big's gonna come you have this massive shield but even if it doesn't hit you right away you still have a shield afterwards to protect yourself something else it does is when you take initial damage right away uh the first hit you take will reflect damage back at your attacker so it's good for putting some retaliatory damage back on the target and it also is a crux consumer so if you use this when you have three crux not only will it grant you this massive shield but it'll also heal you over time for a small amount of time so it's a really great defensive skill like you're going to be spending your crux on this in very dire defensive needs so make sure you're saving crux and using it on here whenever you're in a bind while you're waiting to retaliate back with your target our next skill we're going to have on our bar is going to be our source of major resolve called a crux weaver's armor so what Major Resolve does, it gives us about 6,000 extra armor resistance. On top of that, this skill will generate Crux once every 5 seconds while taking damage. And also on top of that, it'll also apply Minor Breach to your targets while they're hitting you. So not only does this build now have Major Breach with Elemental Susceptibility, it also has Minor Breach with this skill. Also, something else to add, whenever you cast this, um, you will get another armor buff from your Soldier of Apocrypha passives. It will get raised by about 2,000 extra, so just some added techniques by running this ability. For our back bar ultimate, we're running the Tide King's Gaze. It's found out of the Herald of the Tone skill tree on your Arcanist line. Pretty much it's a giant eyeball that just you summon out and it shoots laser balls all over the place, follows your targets around, it does damage every half a second. So you guys get to witness this poor Quarma worker looking, having dude, whatever his name is, just die horribly. There it goes. Look how sexy that looks, bro. So freaking sexy, lad. Sit down, buddy. Moving on to our front bar skills. The very first one we're going to talk about is Sephiliarch's Flail. So if you're a hentai lover, you're in luck because this skill is literally a giant tentacle that comes flying out of your arm that you get to whack people in the face with. I mean, what else could you ask for, really? Honestly, bro. This skill is going to pull from your stamina pool. Uh, it has a 0.3 second cast time, so you do have to aim it. It can be a little bit tricky to land at first, but with some practice, you won't have a problem too much with it. Um, it's going to do some physical damage here. It also is an execute up to a modifier of 100%. So it's going to start doing some increased damage to lower HP targets. The most recent PTS rendition, it also now heals on impact. So the heal is kind of small, like roughly I'm um, getting about 1.7k to 1.8k heals on average. So it's not anything huge, but it does help out quite a bit when fighting outnumbered. Uh, it also is going to apply this new effect called Abyssal Ink. And Abyssal Ink is a brand new debuff coming with this class that's going to increase the amount of damage your targets take by 5%. Keep in mind this damage is only applied to you. Your teammates won't be able to benefit from it, but still, it helps you out tremendously with this build. On top of all that, this ability is also an AoE Immobilize, which will lock people down for 3 seconds. And even if that wasn't enough, it also generates Crux to use on other abilities. It's a pretty packed skill overall. Next on our bar is going to be Escalating Rune Blades. So this skill is a single target ability that shoots three different projectiles at your target. You know, with that third one doing a little bit of AoE damage at the end. This is also going to be your easiest way for building Crux to use on other abilities, such as your beam and uh, your shield, like right here. Up next, guys, is going to be our main stun, and this skill is called Rune of the Colorless Pool. So what this does is a ranged stun that you can throw on your target. It's going to put a little green aura around their face. It's kind of hard to distinguish when this is on you or not, especially for your target. So their CC break-free reaction may be a little bit slower, which is really good for you then you have more time to just clown on them on top of that it also puts two minor debuffs on your target one being minor vulnerability and one being minor brittle minor bone increases the amount of damage they take just flat out and minor brittle increases the amount of critical damage they can take 
We are running Malakath on this build, so we don't really benefit so much from the Brittle, but we definitely benefit from that minor vulnerability. On top of that, they cannot roll dodge this stun, so it'll go through roll dodge, but they can block it. So one good technique I like to do is hit your target with your tentacle to immobilize them, so they'll bait the roll dodge and then fire up the hard stun and then start your beam, which is what we're gonna talk about next. All right, ladies and gentlemen, for the main point of this build, we're gonna be talking about Pragmatic Fake Carver. This is your giant freaking laser beam, ladies and gentlemen. It looks really badass to use, and mechanically, it's extremely badass to use. So, what this does is that you channel this ability for five seconds, and every 0.3 seconds, it's going to do damage. This also gives you a damage shield that is for as long as it persists, you cannot be interrupted while casting. So they're gonna have to burn through that shield before they can stop you from casting this ability. It also is a crux consumer. So if you even just spend one crux on it, it's gonna increase the damage it does by 33%. If you decide to spend all three crux on this ability, it's gonna reduce the cost by 16% per crux spent. So in case you're not paying attention, the whole point of this build is buffing the damage of this giant laser beam, ladies and gentlemen. Let's break it down for you guys. Deadly strikes. 15% damage to channeled abilities. Malakas Ring of Brutality, 16% damage to all abilities. You have your Sephiliarch's Flail, the little tentacle thing we talked about. Puts Abyssal Ink on your target, 5% extra damage to those targets. You have your Hard Stun that puts Minor Vulnerability on your target, another 5%. Spending one Crux on your beam is gonna increase it by 33%. I'm not very good at math. I mean, the most I've ever done in high school was freaking geometry, man. You know, I, this this is hard for me, okay? This is very difficult. But if my calculations are correct, it should be 74% extra damage to your laser beam just from those things alone. This isn't taken to effect your weapon damage or any other like armor debuffs you throw on your target from Ellie Drain. That's just from that damage alone. It's quite insane. But we do have two more skills we need to go over on our front bar, so let's get right back into that. All right, next, guys, we're going to talk about a skill called Blood Craze. It's on the dual wield skill line, and this is why we're running Master's Dual Wield. When we hit it, it's going to be uh, doing a little bit of two strikes right there, and Master Dual Wield is going to buff the damage of those two initial strikes. Following that, it's going to leave a pretty nasty bleed dot over time. It lasts about 20 seconds, so... That's going to have a chance to proccing hemorrhaging status effect, which we also benefit from from the Arcanist, because again, we have that passive that buffs all damage to status effects. And Blood Craze also has the added benefit of healing us every time it does damage. So it adds a nice do over time heal that we can directly benefit by just putting out pressure. It's very helpful for this Arcanist build. All right, last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, our front bar ultimate today is going to be a flawless Dawnbreaker. So we're not really using this to be the ult we are primarily using. We're using this just merely to buff our weapon damage on the front bar because the Fighter's Guild passive adds 3% extra weapon damage to any Fighter's Guild ability slotted. So we're kind of just keeping it there just to buff our overall damage. But sure, you can use it in situations where you don't have enough ult for your main ult being the Tide King's Gaze. It's still a good ult to use overall. Coming up next, guys, we're just going to talk about our CP slottables, at least our combat-oriented ones. So for the blue tree, we have Deadly Aim for 6% extra damage to single target abilities. Next is Thaumaturge to buff the damage of our do over time damage effects, such as your Beam, Blood Craze, Vatishrin Staff. Next is Wrathful Strikes, which is going to increase the damage of all your damaging abilities by 205 weapon and spell damage. Next is Master Arms, which is a 6% increase to all your direct damage attacks. Moving on to our red tree, it's going to be Sustained by Suffering. 150 health, magicka, and stamina recovery while you're under the effects of a negative status effect, which is pretty much all the time. Bastion is going to increase your effectiveness of damage shields by 15%, so that gives you a nice boost to your impervious ward shield, and also your pragmatic fate carver shield when you're casting. Peace of mind is going to give you 200 health and magicka recovery when you're under the effects of crowd control immunity, so whenever you break free, you're going to have a little bit of a buffer to recover some of that HP and your magicka. Slippery is also just great because you get one free break free every 20 21 seconds and this is really helpful because it's just going to really help you manage your stamina pool a little bit more all right last but not least guys i just want to show you little things on the stat page we have here keep in mind i'm going to keep a lot of this mostly unbuffed just to give you guys more of a realistic expectation of what it looks like but uh first thing i want to mention is that we're playing this as a breton i like the sustained passives it offers and i just generally like to go to more of the sustained route because i like that 1bx and whatnot and um usually if you run out of gas in fights then you're probably gonna die so i go breton for some mag sustain just reduce some of the cost of the abilities we can definitely get away with some other races like i'd maybe even try this as a dark elf or even a high elf if you want some more uh, mitigation while you're channeling and whatnot attributes uh, i put 34 into magic 30 in the health and the reason why i do that is because a lot of your shields on this class are based on your max hp 
So the higher health you have, the stronger that is. Um, we hover around a front bar base weapon to spell damage about like 5k roughly or so, just a little bit short of 5k. And that is because Major Sorcery and Brutality will always be on with this build because of the Inspired Scholarship. It doesn't matter if it's on your back bar or your front bar, you will still have that Major Brutality in Sorcery. Some of the defensive stats, like I'm just going to quickly put on Major Resolve and Minor Resolve with Vigor. Uh, it looks like you get 29.5k Physical and 31.8k Spell. It's a pretty hefty amount of resistance. It keeps you very tanky. Again, that's why we run our 3 Heavy, 4 Medium setup to kind of maximize the value of our tankiness and damage of four pieces of medium. And the last two things we're going to talk about here are the Mundus we're running, which is the Atronok. It's about 310 Magicka Recovery when you have it on. And the food we're running, we're running Smoked Bear Haunch, or, or Zorga's Smoked Bear Haunch. And this food's great just all around for most PvP builds. You'll see everybody usually running this. Gives you uh, 3,600 health, and it boosts your health recovery by 346, your stamina and magic recovery by 315. Well, guys, I think that covers everything to do with this build. I'm really excited for the launch on June 5th. And hey, if it is June 5th right now, you should go click my Twitch link down below in the description. You know, we stream there quite often. And hey, we're going to be doing this build on day one of Necrom on June 5th. You know, come and ask questions. Go and type a goose lets you know that you came from YouTube or actually typing goose won't tell me that people we just type goose all the time for no reason there's really no rhyme or reason to it it's just fun how about we just say hi i'm bob from the youtube man i'll be like yo what up bob from the youtube but anyways guys that's besides the point thank you again for watching this video uh we're gonna play a little bit of battleground footage we did on the pts you can actually get to see this build in action but again if you enjoyed today's video make sure to drop a like and subscribe and i will see you all in the next one peace guys have a wonderful rest of your day